Next, uh, we're going to hear from Marlene Guy, who is a resident of Woonsocket and an employee of the United Way, uh, for her perspective. Marlene? Hi, thank you for having me today. Um, I am here to share a little bit about my truth and lived experiences. Um, I'm Marlene Guy. I'm a resident of the city of Woonsocket. I'm a single mother of two adult children, as well as the daughter of an immigrant, and my father is a lifelong union member. I was a non-traditional student who graduated the top of my class as a first-generation college graduate. I spent years in the classroom as a teacher, and I'm a proud program manager for the Grants and Initiatives Department at the United Way. Um, but that, by that story, I'm quintessentially the American dream. Uh, what it doesn't say is that while all of this is true, none of it happened in a silo. This doesn't even scratch the surface of the inequities that I have faced, let alone all of my neighbors. The lack of resources for myself as an abuse survivor, that, that lack of access to social and mental support are found. The challenge of raising two children with little and no financial support has made too much, but just too little is financially something that will affect me for the rest of my life. As a cancer survivor and then the mother of a child with a chronic illness, as well as a mother who is wheelchair bound, uh, the challenges for getting support for all of us in varying degrees seemed insurmountable at times. I have uniquely been on the receiving end of the services that I now help to support. As a Woonsocket resident for 25 years, I have seen my community continue to decline as our manufacturing community struggles to become relevant. The coronavirus has highlighted inequities that we cannot and should not ignore, but be used as a catalyst for change. My community, which was already struggling to provide to its residents, was drastically impacted by this pandemic. While there will be an influx of federal dollars in the immediate, it will not address the gaping long-term inequities that our low-income, working poor, and middle-class families have to deal with. With my work, I am seeing day in and day out the stress and demand on nonprofit and social service agencies that are the, at, their, at their breaking point. Many of these programs were doing balancing acts long before the recent increase in demand. And one of the ways that we can help in this battle is the consistent investment of state funds. We as a state have an opportunity here to reevaluate our tax system based on equity. And this is one of those moments. Collectively, we can identify the chronic disenfranchisement that our poor and middle-class neighbors like mine here in Woonsocket are experiencing. We are not asking for handouts, but a realignment to provide services to all residents. So as a state, we can all thrive and grow. I spoke earlier of my success. Again, those did not happen in a silo. We need to plan for all of our residents to have the resources to create their own success stories. And this bill is a pathway for making that happen. I just wanna thank everyone who is here to advocate and listen and hopefully grow in a more equitable future for our state of Rhode Island. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene, and thank you for sharing your story and obviously highlights the importance of programs and services. And uh, our community is uh, very lucky to have someone of your talents and skills helping uh, to uh, improve things by your, your knowledge of the organizations that uh, are out there helping people. So thank you again.